Hi, and welcome to this video build log of the Dynam Hawker Tempest. The Tempest was a follow-on airplane or a derivative of the Hawker Typhoon. The Tempest first flew in January of 1944. It had a 41-foot wingspan, a 34-foot length, and was powered by a 24-cylinder inline-style engine that, depending on the engine modifications, produced anywhere from 2,200 to 3,000 horsepower. The Tempest had rather anemic high-altitude performance, and so the British developed tactics to make use of its powerful and fast performance in low to intermediate altitudes. One of these was called armed reconnaissance, where it was more of a fighter-bomber role. It also was effective in defending Britain from V-1 buzz bomb attacks and even scored a couple of kills against ME-262 jet fighters by being in the neighborhood when they returned to land where they competed very well in that low altitude regime. The Dynam version of the Hawker Tempest is a one-tenth scale model similar to the other warbirds in the Dynam warbird line. Its wingspan is 49 inches, it's 40 inches long, has a 40 amp, ESC and is powered by a 3720 500 kV brushless motor. Dynam recommends flying this with a 2200 milliamp 14.8 LiPo battery, although modelers on RC groups have reported success with larger batteries. Well, let's take a look at what's inside. Well, it seems to have come through the shipping process in good shape. Like most of the Dynam Warbirds, there simply aren't a lot of pieces and the big ones were all wrapped in bubble wrap and when they were put in the box it was all pretty tight so things stayed nice and snug. You see we've got the fuselage with a large bay that'll mount, that is underneath the cockpit area. We've got the cockpit hatch, pilot and canopy, the two wings, the wing spars buried under here, pieces of the empennage, the instructions, spinner, small parts and a nice sheet of Dynam decals. I like the Dynam decals for a couple reasons. One, they're bright and colorful and they stick well and the other is that they're on this sheet. In other words, they're not applied to the model which means that if you want to make some color variations, a special paint job on your model, you don't have to worry about damaging the foam, ripping the uh, decals off and then not having decals when it comes time to finish it up. And then, of course, we finish up with the instructions that I'm going to take a quick peek at as we get started putting this Dynam Tempest together. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put the wing halves together. And as we get started, I'm going to take some blue painter's tape here and just tape the wires up out of the way so that I know that uh, they're not going to get caught in the gluing process. It's a simple step, but when they're in the way, it gets to be a real pain in the neck. Next, I'm going to put this, these together just a little bit to get a sense of what the glued surfaces are. And so, you can put those together and see what those are going to be. Okay, we're good there. And then next I'm going to put on the glue. Now there's uh, a difference of opinion on the use of glue. Some people like to use CA. We can use CP CA on uh, EPO type foam. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using the CA kicker though because when you put the two pieces together they're, they're stuck and if you've misaligned them at all you don't have any room to, uh, to put them back in proper alignment. But the other choice you have is Gorilla Glue or a polyurethane glue and I don't like that for these kind of long sessions because as the glue cures it foams a little bit and can push the parts apart. So if you've got some gaps you want to fill, the polyurethane glue is pretty good. Not with so much with this in my opinion uh, because you've got to keep it really tight together and that means you've got to stand, sit there and hold it until it cures. Otherwise you run the risk of the parts not aligning and these Dynam models fit pretty tightly together and having a couple of millimeters wider than it expects might mean a tough sell in the fuselage. The other part though I do use then is just the kit glue. Uh, the, the, a lot of people complain about the kit glue but really it works pretty well. It's a contact cement so how you use it um, makes a difference. So, so I'm going to, uh, I've got the, the areas that I want glue and so I'm just going to put some glue on these areas. Now to the other side. Uh, 
I'm not putting on a lot, just a thin layer of the glue, but I'm trying to get it on all of the surfaces. The next thing then I'm going to do is take the um, spar, I call it a glass rod in the instructions, and place it in the wing, and then the other wing. But I'm not going to put them together quite yet, or actually I'm just going to kind of push them together, get that glue to touch one another, and then I'm going to pull it apart. Now you can see that I've got a little bit of threads coming between that. That means that the glue is starting to cure in the air. And that's the contact cement part of this, um, this whole thing. So I've been watching my watch. Since I finished applying the glue, it's coming up on a minute right now. I'm going to go about another 20 seconds. And then I'm going to push these two pieces together. And I'm going to find that they stick pretty well. Enough to, um, to be set aside and finish curing. Okay, the time's up, so we're just going to push this together. I've got a little bit of time with this kind of glue to make some adjustments. Apply some more tape to try to keep them tight together. One more piece along the nose or the leading edge. Okay, now the next step is to make sure that we've got good contact on the bottom by pushing it in. I'm going to put a little bit of glue here on the um, sleeves for the wing bolts. Drop that in. Get the second one. Again a little bit of glue. And then again we've got it here on this back side. I'll drop it into the sleeve. We've got a pretty good seal right now, so we're just going to put the wing away and let it finish curing. The next step that we're going to do that's not reflected in the instructions is to put the control horns on the uh, horizontal stabilizer and elevator and on the rudder and the uh, vertical stabilizer. And that's really pretty easy to do. Um, there's holes drilled in the foam. The control horn that goes on the elevator is the one where the control horn is off to the center. The other one that goes on the rudder is the one where it's, it's mounted in the center. Now there are four flat small screws that come with the kit and you're going to want to use these. These are uh, more like metal screws. Uh, they're not the large threads and they're not pointy. So make sure you get the right screws to put that in. Now what I like to do is I like to put just a little drop of glue where I'm going to be putting these control horns for just a little extra security on both the top and the bottom. And I say a little drop of glue, I mean just a, just a drop. And we'll put the screws through the holes here. And then place them in the two holes and push them through. Really that's all there is to it. Now for those of you who have put these models together, you're well familiar, but remember the control horn points forward and the flat part where the holes are right here goes right in line with the, um, the hinge line. Take the smaller of the two plates and arrange it so that it's perpendicular or matches the side that we had with the, um, on the other side as opposed to uh, if I have it backwards it's going to sit kind of cattywampus on the top uh, of the elevator here. So I've got the holes pretty much aligned and now it's just going to be a matter of twisting them in I've got them started. You can see them coming through on the top here. And then remember that the uh, uh, you're drilling into or you're putting them in this little uh, nylon piece and so you don't want to pull them down too too far. 
Now I may want to go out since these are sticking out quite a bit and use a rotary tool and just cut them off. The thing I've found out from bitter experience is to put a mask around here so that when these hot pieces of metal fall off when you've uh, cut them that they don't melt into the foam. Well I'm going to do the same thing now with the, the rudder and we'll have both of these assembled. The next thing we're going to want to do, which is also not in the instructions, is to put the pilot in the cockpit. Now the pilot is a nice model. He's about the right size and he's painted up to be uh, of the era that this model's flying. So it's a nice pilot figure. Now when you put the pilot in, you're going to discover if you put him down on the bottom that he's like sitting in a well and, and he would just be looking at the instrument panel. So this marks really the first kind of changes I'm going to make to the kit or little modifications. So what I've done is I've got a couple of pieces of Depron foam that six millimeter Depron that I had in my workshop and I just glued them together and then traced the outline of the pilot pretty close, pretty close here along the bottom. That's going to raise the bottom of the cockpit where the pilot sits up by about 12 millimeters and I'm just going to glue that in. So let me do that now. I've dry fitted this already and I know that with these 12 millimeters the pilot's going to look right out through the front of the windscreen. Get a little on the bottom since it's this contact cement. Let it get some air. Next is going to come the pilot. Now the pilot's shoulders are wider than the cockpit and though it goes in out a little bit in here uh, he fits in there pretty tight so what I've done is I've taken a hobby knife and right down here and up here I've just carved out a little of the foam um, to allow his shoulders to kind of fit in notches you can see there on this a little bit of white in there and that's what that is the, uh, the cockpit is painted green and I've carved a little of that foam out now I'm going to put some glue on the bottom of the pilot too now the kit comes with what it calls pilot glue and this is really just CA and if you're going to put him on the bottom that's fine but since I have Depron in here CA eats Depron foam and so I'm going to use the um, the kit glue again to, to glue the pilot onto that Depron now I've waited about a minute for the the glue to get tacky and I'm just going to put the pilot in there and kind of spin him back into his proper position. You can hear the foam and the rubber of the pilot squeak a little bit and now you can see he's up out of the uh, the floor of the cockpit and he's got a much better uh, seating height much uh, closer to the pictures that I was able to see on Google images of the real uh, Tempest in flight so the pilot's head would come in you know just a little bit below the top of the canopy and in this setting this models pilot will as well now speaking of the canopy that's the second little modification that I've done the canopy fits over the top and here you can see that the pilot fits in there very nicely. His head is uh, just below the top of the canopy and if you're looking at him straight on you can see that he's looking out through the front of the windscreen. Now the canopy is the dark green color that is used in the model and so the back part of it the camouflage pattern came across in gray and so what I did is I uh, went and got some what's called slate gray craft paint now this craft paint is just available at a Michaels or a Joann's fabrics that kind of thing and then I had a little black and so what I did is a little dab on a brush at a time I added a little bit of black to the slate gray and came up with an almost perfect match uh, so that the canopy when it is mounted it's going to match the line and match the color across the back and so we'll get the paint out of the way here so that you can see that so the um, canopy will fit right here and it's going to fit just like that and the color will match so that's a, a nice uh, a nice mod that you may want to consider making now 
To put the canopy on, I'm going to use this Formula uh, 560 canopy glue. It's very runny. It's like almost a runny Elmer's School glue type thing. And when I put it on, I'm just going to put a line of it around the edge of this plastic canopy. And what's cool about this is that it's firm but soft glue, and then it also dries clear. So if you were happen to get some on a clear spot, and we're not going to worry about that because so much of the canopy is painted here, as you can see, um, you'll be able uh, to get it glued down just and, and lay it down there uh, just like this. I'm not going to do that right this minute. I'm going to let the fumes and stuff from that contact cement get out of there before I trap it in there and run the risk of discoloring the plastic. So I'm going to set this aside and know that I'm going to come back and glue it in with this uh, canopy glue. Now the last thing I'm going to do before I put the canopy on is I'm going to put the uh, instrument panel in and Dynam provides a decal that came with the kit so I'm going to peel that off and pop that on the front of the cockpit to give it just a little bit more scale appearance. So now the pilot has some gauges to look at and we'll let it all dry. <music>